Hey and welcome to the channel. This is episode three of my Volvo V70 repair. Now I bought this car as a non-runner. It had a dirty misfire and had a coolant leak. Simply just a gasket on the coolant flange. However, I had a couple of other issues with this car. One being audio, ended up ripping up the interior, carpet up, and found that the amplifier had had an absolute drenching. I also ended up putting some lovely rotiform wheels on this car and now it looks an absolute wicked Swedish wagon. In this episode, we're gonna change out a PCV valve. It is burning oil. Now I know it's had a complete lower block, brand new, and a reconditioned cylinder head. So I'm gonna rule out piston rings and valve stem oil seal straight away. So let's look into replacing something simple and easy. I am hoping it is not the turbo. So that is the inlet manifold off. A couple of the connectors will be in a little bit of a pain, this lower one here for the throttle body. And then these are always a nightmare because they're plastic. You have to just compress them and there's an O-ring there and you're just always scared you're gonna snap the cage. So that one was an absolute bugger to wiggle off, but we're there. Now there are signs of oil. There's a little bit in the pipe work down to the intercooler, but you'd expect that you do get a little bit of oil. But this is what I'm gonna be replacing today. This is the PCV valve. There was just a lot of oil around it. I have cleaned off the lower edge around the block, so it is a little bit cleaner now, but there was a lot of contamination of oil and bits and pieces there. So I have a new one of those, along with some new inlet manifold rubbers. So I'll clean that up. There is oil residue on this as well. And on that throttle body quite a bit there. Looking along this edge, it possibly has a little bit of a leak and then it's running over the top and down the back edge of this manifold. So I will look at possibly ordering one of those as well. Right, so this is the old one. As you can see, it's pretty oily, caked in there. There's a lot of grime. I don't think this was replaced when the new block went on. Um, it just looks really old and dated and here is my replacement a nice new article exactly the same with a new gasket as well So hopefully this will fix that slight burning of oil So to me this sounds like the first logical step as it has the characteristics of the PCV failing with it Firing oil back into the inlet manifold and causing blue smoke at the back basically rather than it dumping it back into the crankcase so that is the new PCV valve assembly in, bolted up tight. So I've cleaned the inlet manifold, degreased it and dried it, so it's all looking nice, oil free. I have also now installed the new rubber gaskets onto the ports and cleaned the throttle body as well. Also, the mating face on the cylinder head is nice, clean and dry now as well, ready for a nice fit and seal of the gaskets. So that is the manifold all back on, connections all done. Not too bad of a job. I'm gonna have a go removing the intake pipe again, all these coils and electrical connectors at the top here, and try and get this rocker cover or camshaft cover off the top here, and then check the seal of that. So I have found another issue with this car. These are your coils. This is what I've taken out of the far left, so I'm calling this number one, all the way across to number four. Number one was covered in oil. I've now dried it off, but what has actually happened is the gasket that seals the camshafts from the spark plug turret, or where the spark plugs go, has failed. So there is a pool of oil, if it will shine up and focus, there is a pool of oil in the number one spark plug turret. I am surprised this wasn't misfiring because with the oil contamination, I'm surprised the coil was able to send um, the current to the spark plug tip. So I'm finding things and I'm fixing things, which is a positive. It is making me wonder, are these Ford engines that terrible though, reliability wise? There's a lot of hate for them on the internet and I'm already seeing failures, which I wouldn't expect really. Right, let's carry on with this. I'll put the camera on the stand and let's get this rocker cover, cam cover off. <laughs> So the rocker cover or cam cover removal was going pretty well. Nice little self-contained threaded nuts all the way around until I got to a bracket just at the back here, that bolt hole there. 
Once that's out, it doesn't have enough slack, free play, to lift it off to then get to the nut below to take the rocker cover off. And you guessed it, the other bolt securing that bracket is all the way down the back of the motor. I've just got it out. And now I'm able to move that bracket free and I can get to the nut bolt there. Then this cover should come off. So here is a better view of the number one cylinder with all that oil sat around that spark plug. Look at it, bathing in it. You can see from the witness marks, it's just been running down that back face there and then trickling in. So we'll clean all of the faces all the way around the top of the cylinder head and then fit the new gasket to the rocket cover. So the plug is gonna come out just, I've tried cleaning it putting a bit of rag down in that and trying to mop up the oil but I think it's easier just to get the plug out and then just flush it out it will fire out sit on top of the piston but it'll be right holy who the oh. Oh. that was ridiculously tight I have got the amplifier back Further searching, and I managed to find an electronics company in Gloucester, actually, who does stuff from his house. It's his own little business. He's used to doing all sorts of PCB boards and testing on any electronic stuff. So he's kindly had a look at it. He has replaced four Moffets, I think they're called, and repaired some of the board itself. He's pretty confident now it will work. There's some stuff he couldn't test because he just hasn't got the Volvo equipment for it. But what he's tested, he's saying everything is now working. So let's plug that in. And this could be an absolute groundbreaking moment for me. It is thundering and lightning like crazy. The cows are not happy. It's about to absolutely chuck it down. Amp is connected. The ignition is off, but because the door's open, I'm guessing the camber system and everything's woken up inside. And I did just hear some popping from the speakers. Oh, got a pop down there. Is that everywhere? Top's working. Come on! It works, come on! Yes! It is absolutely chucking it down. Thunder and lightning, the lot. But I am so happy. The fact that that audio is now working, all the speakers are working. I've used the fader, moved it all the way left, all the way right. Everything is working. What a relief. To put into context, the repair today was 950 pounds cheaper than a brand spanking new amp from Volvo, Sweden order. So that has saved me a lot of money. I am very thankful for that guy today. So thank you, EDR repairs. I'm gonna end up flooding in a minute. So that is the cam cover back on now. I didn't do a full film on that because it's not that interesting, but yeah. Put a little bit of sealant around the gasket on this one just to help when it squishes down and is all tightened down, that there is a better chance of it sealing um, against the face. All the routing's done. That's the thunder and lightning. Ugh. The roof is leaking right now, which isn't great. This rain is relentless. It's sitting pretty out the back. That angle really works well for that car with the uh, back end and that rear wheel. Its stance is beautiful. So I'm gonna grab the next car, which is next door. I'm gonna quickly get it out so it doesn't get too wet. And let's just have a quick look round for what we can. I'd ideally like to do this outside, but I just don't want it getting soaked and I don't want to get soaked. Here is my mini JCW R56. I've been wanting one of these cars for quite a few years. I know they have their problems, but I had an itch that needed to be scratched. And this is this car.
So this is my little mini. Love it or hate them, I absolutely love them. I've always loved them and I don't know why. I haven't spent too much time in them. I know they're stiff, I know they're rattly, I know they're unreliable, but just something about this size and this power, it just is like a little go-kart. So as you can see, 13 plate registered. It has the later N18 engine, which is supposedly more reliable than the earlier N14. This is a completely standard car, which is quite rare these days for these minis. 11 years old, clean title car as well. It just came up at a good price on Facebook Marketplace and I just had to have it. It's in quite a contrasting color. You don't see too many in the white silver paint, which is a metallic. Obviously this came standard with the red stripes, the red roof and the mirror caps and the detail down the side. Already I have visions and plans for this car. I think I'm gonna stick with the red roof and the mirror caps. The bonnet stripes are gonna come off along with the side. As long as the paint isn't too different under here where the sun's been on it for 11 years, I'm hoping it's not too faded. But yeah, I think it would look better and cleaner with the red roof, the red caps, and this just all silver on the front, along with making these go black. They do like blackout kits, so I think this de would look a lot better. So these trims in black to match the black backing of the headlight. And I also think I'll go black on the side of this as well. Moving along down the side, I think once again, I'll go black on the door handles and on the petrol cap. At the back of the car, I'm also thinking black around the headlight trim. I remember when these minis came out and I started seeing this challenge wing on it. It is carbon fiber. At first I hated them and thought it looked horrible. Now this car is specced with it, I actually really like them. Years have gone by and I think it's aged pretty well. The car also comes with a carbon fiber trim for the boot lid. However, a negative is that it has pushed in and cracked the paint and allowed a small rust bubble on the left hand side, no bigger than 5p piece. That is something I am going to address. And also it has just started on the right hand side as well. I'm guessing it's quite tight up against the paint and as years of vibration rattles, it chips the paint away and allows water in. One thing I do want to do is remove this lower silver trim piece here between the exhaust and the bumper and fit the Challenge Aero Diffuser. This gives it a nice aggressive touch without going too crazy. I think then it makes all the shapes and the lines of this rear end really work. So inside the car now, it's an average spec build. It has the basic seats, which actually are quite comfortable, but they're not heated, which is a shame. However, everything else is in very good condition considering it's done 113,000 miles. It doesn't look too worn on the steering wheel and it has the media pack as well. So you get your sat nav and your Bluetooth connectivity for your phone. So that's quite nice even in this day and age. It's not Apple CarPlay, but it's a nice spec for that. It's got a heated windscreen. Obviously being the JCW, it's got a nice wheel. Everything's on here and it's half Alcantara, half leather. It also has Harman Kardon, so that's a nicer aspect to this, having a bit of better sound in here. I'm also going to change the bulbs in these little lower daylight running. The by Xenon lights, factory ones, are a lot bluer and clearer than the standard amber ones here. So when you look at the car from the front, I know it's a little bit petty, but for the sake of like 10 quid or whatever, having some whiter LED bulbs here, which should match the top, I just think makes it aesthetically look from the front a bit better. I don't think those window wipers are on the right spline notch. They sit slightly too high. So when you're in the car looking out, they look quite high up. I think it should run perfectly in line with that black seal there. So I'm gonna have to unbolt those, drop them down a couple of teeth so that they sit flush along that edge. One thing I didn't notice when I picked it up was a mark just in this bit here. And it has scagged and dented slightly through the red. I am gonna take the red off. I may try and find a silver wing if possible. I'm not gonna go crazy on this car because I wanna keep the costs down, but it is a little bit of a factor when someone comes to buy this car, having that gouge in the side there. You join me in the cockpit of the Mini on a four hour round trip to go and get some new parts for it. It will be revealed in the next video, so it'll be worth it. Thank you ever so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.